Sir, shall we start, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, good morning, all. Once again, on behalf of uh, SPC, I welcome Dr. Nagan, sir, to continue the session on uh, movement distribution method. I request Dr. Nagan, sir, to take over the session. Please, sir. OK, ma'am. Thank you. So, dear participants, hope you are, you are conversant with the moment distribution method of analysis of portal frames, okay, without sidesway, okay? without sidesway, how to analyze, we have seen any doubt in that, any clarification, can get it clarified before proceeding to uh, frames with sidesway. Mr. Gokulnath. Sir, IT. Kartik, sir. Maria, Monisha. Okay. We continue. Okay. So, with this, we all stop and uh, say. First, we should explain to our students when we will have side sway. Okay, when will we be having side sway? Okay, so unsymmetrical frames, so frames which are unsymmetrical. For example, say uh, if the left column, okay, the left column is having moment of inertia i, and the right side column is having moment of inertia two i, but all the other things are symmetrical. Say the columns may be having same height. Uh, uh, say moment of inertia b may be something different. Okay. So even if that that is we call this as unsymmetrical frame, okay? It's because the moment of inertia of the columns are different, okay? Or in case if the heights of the columns are different, say the left side uh, column has four meter height, there, and if the right side column is three meter height, there, then it is a again a unsymmetrical frame. So in case unsymmetrically loaded frames, say a frame may be symmetrical, frame may be symmetrical, say the columns may be uh, three meter height. There. Both the end conditions are same. Okay, the loading. Uh, if the loading is the non-central point load, then in that case we'll be having side sway. Okay, then uh, actually when we will not have side sway means say if we have a lateral load, if we have a lateral load, but you have provided a support at the beam level. If we have provided support at the beam level, then that frame will not be subjected to side sway. This thing we should uh, uh, teach to our students because they should be able to identify which frames will have side sway and which will not have any side sway. Because in the examination, they will not give you. They will give you simply the frame. So we need to identify whether the frame will be having side sway or not. And then we need to proceed accordingly. Because side frames without uh, side sway has to be dealt in a different way. And frames with side sway have to be dealt with in a different manner. Only some slight variations. The other steps will be common steps will be there. Additional steps need to be done for uh, frames with side sway. So that we need to first identify whether the uh, frame will be subject to side sway or not okay so let us take this frame okay so whether this frame will be subjected to side sway or not any anyone tell me Whether this frame will be having side sway or not. Saudami, Saudami Rajan, are you there? Ramesh sir, is there a side sway? Which frame, sir? The frame, oh, I have not shown the, shared my presentation. Ah, okay, wait, sorry. I'll share my. Now oh, please see. Do you see the frame? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me whether we will be having side sway for this frame or not. Okay. So yes, I'll tell you. Side, having side sway, sir. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you the reason. Okay. Say this frame has combination of the uh, several factors which I told earlier. Okay, the first factor is the frame is unsymmetrical. Frame is unsymmetrical. Ah, unsymmetrical in the sense, column A B is of height three meters, 
column CD is of height 2 meters. Similarly, moment of inertia of column AB is 2i. Moment of inertia of column CD is 1.5i. Okay? So this itself will make the uh, frame to undergo side sway. Another combination, another uh, reason is it has a lateral load. It has a lateral load. So if you have lateral load, definitely there will be side sway of the frame. Though the frame is, though if the frame is symmetrical, we have lateral load, the frame will be subjected to lateral displacement or side sway. Okay. Only thing, if you have provided a support at the beam level, say beam level is BC, so if I have provided a support here, a rigid support here, then the frame will not be subjected to side sway. Okay. But here it will be subjected to side sway because of the set reasons. Okay. The frame is unsymmetrical, it has a lateral load, these uh, uh, columns are of different height, columns are of different moment of inertia, okay, everything. So let us see how to analyze a frame with side sway. So first you should write the reasons for side sway. Okay? This frame will be subjected to side sway since the frame is unsymmetrical okay, and it has a lateral load. So a combination of the conditions will make this uh, frame undergo side sway. So as usual, step one, stiffness and relative stiffness. Stiffness and relative stiffness. Whether the screen visible clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. So span AB, BC, CD. Length AB 3 meters, BC 2 meters, CD 2 meters. Moment of inertia. Moment of inertia of column AB is 2i, BC is i, and for column CD is 1.5i. Then stiffness. Stiffness. Say AB, A is fixed, B is continuous, therefore i by L. So 2i by 3 will be the stiffness for this. And for BC, for BC, we have uh, B is continuous, C is continuous, therefore I by L, so I by <coughs> 2. Then for CD, 1.5 I by 2, because uh, C is continuous, D is fixed, therefore I by L. In case if you have any one of the supports as hinged or freely supported as we had in the previous example, then 3 4 I by L should be used. And here every, every and scow i by l what is step two and relative stiffness also in the same step you need to do relative stiffness i have multiplied by three by i i multiplied by three by i i got here as two here 1.5 here three into 1.5 4.5 into 2.25 okay so these are the relative stiffness values and step two will be distribution factor okay step two will be distribution factor so distribution factor df a b equal to 0 since a is fixed and df b a equal to k b a by k b a plus k b c okay, k b a by k b a plus k b c so 2 divided by 2 plus 1.5 0 0.57 and df b c will be uh, k b c by k b a plus k b c which is 1.5 by 2 plus 1.5 which is 0 0.43 so sum of these dis distribution factors at any joint should be equal to 1. So if I add these to 0.57 plus 0 0.43, I will be getting as 1. Then come to DFCB. DFCB is KCB by KCB plus KCD. That is stiffness of the member considered by sum of stiffnesses of members meeting at a joint. Okay, sum of, uh, stiffness of the member considered is 1.5. Sum of stiffness of members meeting at a joint is 1.5 plus 2.5 is 0.4. Then DFCD equal to KCD by KCD plus KCB. Small k, use small k for uh, relative stiffness or stiffness. Okay. So 0.6. Sum of distribution factor at any giant should be 1. So 0.4 plus 0.6 will be equal to 1. Here 0.57 plus 0.43 equal to 1. Distribution factor at A is 0 because A is fixed. Similarly, distribution factor at D is also 0 since C is D is fixed. Okay. So DF distribution factor for DC is equal to 0 since D is fixed. Then step three, step three is fixer and moments. Okay, fixer and moments. So span A B, okay, span A B. We have a yeah, central point load. If you take the, if you see the original uh, frame, given frame. Say if you take this frame, what is the load given? Please see. So here, the span AB is subjected to a central point load. So if you take this span AB, 
if we make it as horizontal, then AB that will be subject to a fixed beam subject to central particle because 1.5 meter 1.5. Therefore, MF AB will be minus WL by 8 and MF BA will be plus WL by 8. And span BC is subject to UDL. Therefore, MF BC will be minus WL squared by 12. MF CB will be plus WL squared by 12. So, in this problem for column also we are getting fixer and moments. Okay. So, minus WL by 8 plus WL by 8 and then minus WL squared by 12 plus WL squared by 12. Okay. Now, uh, actually the frame will be subjected to side sway. Actually, there are several methods of handling side sway problem, but this is one method as I told initially uh, taught by our professor Mukti sir. We will follow this procedure or I will follow this procedure. If it's comfortable, you can take this or you can follow the method specified in textbooks. Okay. So here, what we will need to do is, first we need to do the moment distribution due to non-sway condition. Okay. That is, you are assuming that is, there is no sway. If you first just have the uh, moments distributed, okay, as we do in the normal procedure, as uh, we have seen the normal problems which we have seen so far. So, please see here. This is moment distribution due to non sway condition. Moment distribution due to non sway condition. So, as usual, right joint, as usual, right joint, okay, then member uh, joint A, B, C, D. Joint A, B, C, D, member A, B, at B, the members meeting are B, A and B, C, at C, members meeting are C, B and C, D, and at D, D, C, okay, write the members meeting. Then, relative stiffness, 2, 2, 1.5, 2.25, 2.25, 2.5. Then, distribution factor, A, B, 0, this 0 0.57, 0 0.43, this will be 0 0.43, 0 0.4, 0 0.60, okay. Then, first iteration, first iteration, we can straight away start the first iteration because we do not have any freely supported ends, all are fixed support. So, write the fixer and moment. Fixer moment in AB is minus 3 and in BA is plus 3. Okay. Fixer moment in BC is minus 3, CB is plus 3. Fixer moment in CD, DC is 0 because there is no load. Then DM, distributed end moment. There, the, this line is not required. Okay. Line between FEM and DM is not required. So, distributed end moment. In case of distributed end moment, we need to consider every joint. So consider joint A. So consider joint A. At joint A, we have minus 3. So plus 3 need to be applied. Multiplied by the corresponding distribution factor, we will be getting 0. Then come to joint B. Okay, joint B. At joint B, we have 3 minus 3. So 3 minus 3 will be 0. So nothing could be distributed. Therefore, 0, 0. Here, Joint C, 3 and 0. Therefore, unbalanced moment is 3. So, balancing moment will be minus 3. So, minus 3 multiplied by this factor, 0.4 is minus 1.2. Minus 3 multiplied by 0.6 is minus 1.8. Okay. So, this comprises first iteration. Okay. This completes first iteration. So, first iteration comprises FEM and DEM. Okay. Then, we will go to second iteration. Second iteration will comprise COM and DEM. Third iteration will also comprise COM, DEM. Fourth iteration, if you have, then COM, DEM. We should end up with DEM. Always distributed moment should be the end. Okay. So, carryover moment. Second iteration, carryover moment. So, carryover moment should be done within members. So, AB to BA, BC to CB, CD to DC. So, mark this arrow. Because otherwise, you will be, as I told you initially, you will be uh, wrongly doing the uh, carryover between B and BC. That should be avoided. So that to avoid that only we are putting this arrow so that we will not make any mistakes in carrying over within the numbers. We'll do only within the numbers C D B C B C C B A B B A. Likewise, only carried over should be done within numbers. Because it is students' attitude to make mistakes. So we should make them clear how, how to avoid mistakes. Okay. So here zero, here zero, then here minus one point two, so minus point six zero. <clears throat> here minus 1.8 minus 0.90 okay then distributed end moment distributed end moment here joint a 0 therefore 0 joint b 0 minus 0 0.6 0 minus 0 0.6 so 0 0.6 need to be applied to balance this so unbalanced is 0.6 minus 0 0.6 so 0 0.6 need to be applied 0 0.6 multiplied by 0.57 is this 0 0.342 0 0.6 multiplied by this 0.43 this value then come here so here we have no value, therefore 0, 0. 
then here 0.9 so that was zero because distribution back to zero then cyf carry over moment so half of the moment will be carried out half the moment will be carried out so you can simply transfer this arrow here simply that therefore you can compare we are doing rightly okay the carry over so half the value will be carried over half the value carried over here then after carry over moment distribute the end moment okay so third, third iteration fourth iteration finally okay you should add from where from where you should add tell me from where we should add we should add from fixer and moment. first iteration fixer and moment values we should add you to get the final end moments okay but these these final end moments are not the real final end moments because we have assumed that the frame does not have any side sway and we have done this moment distribution okay we have done one moment distribution assuming non sway condition okay that there is no sway the distribution will be like this but in the actual problem we will be having side sway okay in the actual problem will be having side sway due to the conditions which i explained earlier okay and we call these values as m dash values we call these values as m dash values can okay, m dash values now the next step is we need to find a uh, fixer and moment due to side sway okay this is the next step fixer and moment due to side sway fixer and moment due to side sway because there will be side sway so how to find fixer and moment due to side sway please see here diagram so ab will be subject to side sway of delta here and cd will be subject to side, uh, side sway of delta here as shown in the diagram because we have a lot of load uh, from left to right this will make the frame sway towards the right direction so mark the sway like this delta delta okay then fixer and moment due to side sway this is this table is fixer and moment due to side sway so span ab bc cd yes okay? span ab bc cd sway or uh, lateral displacement in ab we have delta bc b does not have a side sway so for zero column cd will be subject to side sway of delta okay then fixer end moment due to side sway fixer end moment due to side sway is given by plus or minus 6 ei delta by l square plus or minus 6 ei delta by l square and in bc zero so for leave it here plus or minus 6 ei delta by l square okay so we need to put a uh, no when we need to use plus sign and when we allowed to use minus sign okay so for this the rule is say consider ab consider ab so ab we have sway at the right end okay we have sway at the right end so if you have sway at the right end we need to use minus sign if the sway is to the left side use plus sign okay there is also reason i will tell you why minus for uh, Uh, right side displacement and the plus for left side displacement there is a reason i will i'll show you using jam board uh, later okay so right now you take if you have right side displacement minus 6a delta by l square if you have left side displacement plus 6a delta by l square so minus we take 6e substitute appropriate i value because i variation is that so ab is having 2i delta divided by l square so this will be equal to minus 12ea delta by l square okay minus 6 into 2 is 12 So 12 ea delta by l squared. This is zero. Here 6 e i is 1.5 i. Therefore minus 9 ea delta by l squared. So these are the fixed end moments due to sway. Okay, fixed end moment due to sway. This uh, this formula is we have used in the case of continuous beam when we have sinking of supports or settlement of supports. So that might itself you might have been taught how to find the fixed end moment due to sinking. Sinking of supports. So plus or minus 6a delta by l squared. Then we use sign convention as if we have right side sinking to the right side, then you use minus sign. If the sinking is to the left side, you will use you will be using plus sign. So same uh, rotation or convention used here. If we have uh, sway in the right side of the span, then minus. If we have sway to the left side of the span, then plus. Okay. Yeah. So here we have both minus. Okay. Now what we need to do is. we can assume a value of ea delta okay we can assume a value of ea delta so say assume ea delta equal to 100 we can assume any value we can assume any value from 1 to uh, infinity not infinity but 1 to more than 1 okay 
okay you can assume any value not zero if you put zero then everything will become zero so if you can assume ea delta value some value which you know you like or option okay so here i have taken 100 assume ea delta equal to 100 so if i put ea delta equal to 100 we know the span ab so if i put a substitute i'll get the value of the fixed and moment as a value here value i'll be getting minus 133.33 here it is zero and here it is minus 225 okay so how do you get this value because i am assuming ea delta as 100 even you can assume ea delta as 10 okay or 5 or 1 or 2 any value you can assume ea delta finally you will be correcting that value okay this value is not correct we are assuming finally we need, need to be corrected so if you put ea delta equal to 100 and 12 divided by l squared span ab we have span so substitute l squared you will be getting minus 133.33 in a similar way 9 ea delta by l squared 9 into ea delta uh, put to 100 l value put abrupt span for span value of cd therefore this so these are the fixed and moments due to assumed sway okay these are the fixed and moments due to assumed sway because we are assuming a sway so this now what we are going to do is we are going to do another moment distribution due to assumed sway. The moment distribution due to assumed sway. That is the next step. Okay. Step one, stiffness and relative stiffness. Step two, distribution factor. Step three, fixer and moments. Step four, moment distribution due to non-sway condition. Step five, we need to compute the fixer and moments due to some assumed sway. And step six, we need to do once again the moment distribution due to assumed sway condition. Okay, due to assumed sway condition. So again, join A, B, C, D. Remember, A, B. At B, we have B, A, B, C. At C, we have C, B, C, D. At D, we have D, C. Okay, then relative stiffness. Already we have computed. Distribution factor already we have computed. Now, fix it at the moment. Fix it in moment. You need to use these values. What we have arrived for fixed moment due to assumed sway. So minus 133.33 for A, B, and B, A. So for A, B, and B, A, minus 133.33, minus 133.33. B, C, and C, B, 0. For C, D, and D, C, minus 225, minus 225. Okay. So immediately after F, E, M, D, E, M. So D, E, M means we have minus 133.33 plus 133.33 need to be applied, multiplied by appropriate distribution factor, therefore 0. Here, joint B. Minus 133.33 is there, plus 0 will give come. Minus 133 is unbalanced moment. So, for 133.33, need to be applied for balancing. This multiplied by appropriate distribution factor will give you this value. This, similarly, 133.33 multiplied by 0.43 will give you this value. Then we have 0 and minus 225. So, plus 225 need to be applied. Multiplied by 0.4 will give you this value. Multiplied by 0.6 will give you this value. Then here, minus 225 is here. Plus 225 need to be applied. Multiplied by the distribution factor, we are getting 0. So, first iteration gets completed. Second iteration, carry over moment. Okay. So, carried over should be done between A, B and B, A, uh, B, C and C, B, C, D and D, C. So, mark the arrow like this. So, 0, 75.9 divided by 2 will be 37.99. Then here, uh, half of this value, half of this value, half the value goes okay? here. So, once you have carry over moment, then D, E, M. Second iteration comprises C, O, F, D, E, M. First iteration comprises F, E, M, D, E, M. So, D, E, M. Consider every joint. So, 37.9 is the unbalanced moment. Minus 37.9 need to be applied. Multiply by the appropriate distribution factor 0. Therefore, 0. Then here, 0, 45. So, minus 45 need to be applied. Minus 45 multiplied by 0. 0.57. Minus 25.65. Minus 45 multiplied by 0. 0.43. Minus 18.9. Immediately after arriving these values as a check, add these values. 0, 45, minus 25.65, minus 8, minus 8, should get 0. Okay. Similarly, here, 27.99 is the unbalanced moment, minus 27.99 is the balancing moment. Balancing moment multiplied by appropriate or corresponding distribution factor to give you these values. Then, second cycle gets completed. Okay. Then, COM, DEM. So, likewise, you need to four iterations. Okay. So, at the end, we need to add all the values from FEM. Add the values vertically, leaving the values written in bracket. Don't add the values within written in bracket. This is for our reference only. Whatever the values you write here within bracket is for our reference and computations. Okay. That need, should not be added elsewhere. That's why we need to write. We should develop the habit uh, to student of writing this using pencil. Okay. Then add, you will be getting these values. These values we call as M double dash values. We call this as M double dash values. 
Okay, initially we have got one moment distribution values that is m dash values, and this is m double dash values. Okay, so the next step, the next step is to find the correction factor. To find the correction factor because we have assumed some side sway. Similarly, yeah, the user, any user will use his own side sway value, but it, everything need to be corrected. So that is that step is to find the correction factor capital R. How to find the correction factor? So that we will be using what is called as horizontal shear condition equation. In case of portal frames, in case of portal frames with side sway, in case of portal frames with side sway, we can develop the horizontal shear condition equation. So the horizontal shear condition equation will be like this. Say we will be having a frame subject to lateral load P. Say it's acting a distance uh, uh, B1 from here or B1 or A1, okay, whatever may be the distance from here. So the using horizontal shear condition equation will be using sigma h equal to zero, this p from left to right minus hj minus hd equal to zero. Okay, p minus hj minus hd equal to zero. So how to find hj and how to find hd? So we need to consider free body of AB. Okay, to consider free body of AB, you have lot lat load p, you have MAB here, you have MBA here, you have hj here. Okay, hj here. So if I want to find this reaction HA, I need to take moment about this joint and equal to zero. So if I take moment about this joint, I'll be getting MAB plus MBA minus P into B1. Because MAB clockwise, I assume clockwise. This I assume clockwise. So MAB plus MBA minus P into B1 minus H D or plus H A into H1. This height of this column is H1, from which I'll be getting value for HA. Okay. Similarly, if I consider free body of C D, I can find uh, the horizontal reaction at so HA I will be getting as minus MAB minus MBA uh, plus PB1 by H1. Similarly, consider free body of CD. Consider free body of CD. In CD, you will be having MCD and MDC. So that will be having horizontal reaction HD. To find HD, take moment about C. Okay. So I will be getting HD value. I'll be getting HD value. Then you use the horizontal shear condition equation. P minus HA minus HD equal to zero. Therefore, the minus sign will get cancelled. We'll be getting this equation like this. So, I'll be having this lateral load P, lateral load P plus MAB plus MBA minus PB1 by H1 plus MCD plus MDC by H2 equal to zero. So, we can make our student to how to write this equation even without deriving these things. Even without deriving, we can uh, tell them how to remember this equation. Say you have a portal frame with side sway. Okay, you have a portal frame with side sway. Say, please see here. Okay. Show the diagram. Say, you ask them to write first the lat load P. Okay, P plus the end moment for AB. The end moment is MAB. Here it is MBA. So MAB plus MBA minus. P into this load. This will be, will be giving some moment. So minus PB1. Okay. MAB is the N moment at A. MBA is the N moment at B. So MAB plus MBA minus PB1 divided by height of this column. That will give you the next component. Similarly, for this component, MCD plus MDC. N moment at C, N moment at D. MCD plus MDC divided by H2. Okay. Here, MAB plus MBA minus PB1 will be giving moment. We know that moment divided by span will be the reaction due to horizontal reaction. Okay, whenever you have moment, moment divided by span will be the horizontal reaction. That concept only we are using. So if to find HA, I'll get I'll be getting MAB plus MBA minus PB1 by H1. Similarly, uh, to find HD, MCD plus MDC divided by H2 will give you HD. So P minus HA minus HD equal to zero. Therefore, you can uh, ask them to remember this equation as P plus MAB plus MBA minus PB1 by H1. Uh, say P plus MAB plus MBA minus PB1 by H1 plus MCD by plus MDC by H2 equal to zero. This is the horizontal shear condition equation for all frames with side sway. Okay, for any frame with side sway, you can very well use this horizontal shear condition equation. Okay, we know what is P. P is the applied lateral load. P is the applied lateral load. So this equation can be expanded like this. This equation can be expanded like P plus MAB can be written as m dash a b plus r times m double dash a b m a b can be expanded as m dash a b plus r m double dash a b 
then MBA can be written as M dash BA plus R times M double dash BA, okay, minus PB1 by H1 plus this MCD, MCD can be written as M dash CD plus R times M dash CD and MBC can be written as M dash DC plus R times M double dash DC divided by H2 equal to 0. So from this equation, we will be able to find the value of R. How, how can we find the value of R? Because M dash AB, we can take value from the first moment distribution table. M double dash AB, we can take the value in the second distribution table. R will be unknown. Similarly, M dash BA, take from first table. M double dash BA, take from the second table. R is unknown. P and B1 are known. Because lateral load is known. Lateral load is 8 kN. And H1, height, H1 of, uh, height of column 1 is 3 meters. B1, the distance between the lateral load and our top of the frame is 1.3 meter. H2 is 2 meter. So we can very well substitute all these values. Only thing is R is unknown. Okay? So the two moment distribution values will be helpful here. That's why I named the first table values as M dash values and second table values as M double dash values. So th those values will be useful here. So substitute the values of P, substitute the value of M dash AB, R times M double dash AB plus M dash BA, R times M double dash BA minus PB1. Okay? Now we, we may have a doubt. Say, I, if in the column, if in the column I have a UDL, applied UDL, I can very well use this formula. I can very well use this formula. So in case of UDL, this P will be replaced by W T L because W is the intensity of the load. L is the length over which the UDL acts. Therefore, P can be replaced by the lateral load will be UDL in case of UDL, uh, intensity into length. Here, PB1. So, P, force will be W into L and distance, CG distance. So, it will be half the height, H1 by 2. So, thereby, this general equation can be used for any problem. Okay. In case, if I have a lateral load applied at the top of the frame, if I have the lateral load applied, wind load, say, take the case of wind load, applied at the top of the beam, at the beam level, if I apply P as the beam level, then if, if P is 10 kN, so P apply, use P as 10 kN, and here this term gets cancelled, because there won't be any B1, since the load is applied at the top of the frame. Other things being same. So using this equation, if you substitute, we can find the value of R. R is nothing but the correction factor. R is nothing but the correction factor. Once the correction factor is known, then say R they have found us uh, in this problem they have found us 0 0.142 and this R will be differing for everyone. Okay, if you have assumed as 100, you will get this value. If you have assumed as 10, you may get different value. If you have assumed as 1, you may get different value. Okay, 5, 10, 15, anything. So depending upon the value you assume, you will be getting the R correction factor value. Okay, then final end moment. We we'll see how do we get the final end moment. Final end moments. Right join. Okay, right join. A, B, C, D. Okay, A, B, C, D. Number A, B, B, A, B, C, C, B, C, D, D, C. Okay, A, B, B, A, B, C, C, B, C, D, D, C. M dash values. Right, the M dash values. What are the M dash values? Can anyone tell where we get M dash values? Where will we be having M dash values? Where will we be having M dash values? Final end moment of first, first moment distribution. Very good. First table. So write those values here. Okay. Then multiply R into M double dash values. The second table, as he told, as he told uh, first moment distribution, the second table values multiply by R. Okay. We have now got the value of R. So have these values. Then final end moment will be addition of these two. So this will be the final end moment. Okay. I repeat. Write the M dash values from the first moment distribution table. Okay. You have found R value. R value is a correction factor. Since you have assumed this way, that values need to be corrected with the help of this correction factor. So R into M double dash values. Whatever M double dash values, that is the values obtained in the second table, are not corrected. So they need to be corrected. So multiply by the correction factor. You get the corrected values. Then add these two. You will be getting the final moments. This is the procedure uh, which will be followed for any portal frame with side sway. Any uh, side sway problem can be easily accommodated using this. So for these things, you need to remember only the how to write the horizontal shear condition equation. So horizontal shear condition equation is nothing but lateral load P plus AB. You take column AB. MAB plus MBA minus PB1 divided by H1 plus MCD plus MDC divided by H2 equal to 0. Okay. 
will be, will be given the values of P, will be given the value of B1, H1, H2, M dash values take from first table, M double dash values take from second table, find the correction factor, then form this table. So you'll be getting the final. Once you get the final moment, other procedures are same. Write the uh, end moments here. Here I have minus 4.32, here 2.22, minus 2.22, 3.3, minus 3.3, here minus 3.2. So there, there will be moment balance. If you have done the moment distribution and other things correctly, there will be balance of moment at every joint. At fixed end, there will be a fixed moment. Okay, there will be some moment. Now we will see how to plot this venue diagram. Okay, how to plot the venue diagram. Say here minus 4.32. So minus means anti clockwise. So if I apply an anti clockwise moment here, if I apply an anti clockwise moment here, where the column will move towards left or right? Left to side. Left. So mark it left side. How about here? Plus 2.22. Apply a clockwise moment here. Apply a clockwise moment here. Where it will move? Just apply a clockwise moment like this. Right side. How right side? Inner side. Ah, how inner side? Say you, you are standing here, you place a pencil here and apply a clockwise moment. See where the column will be. Placed. Outside, outside. Outside only. So 2.22 need to be fined outside. So 4.32 also outside. This 2.2 also outside. Mark these two. We'll get a trapezium. Okay. So do one by one. One column, then beam and another column. Okay, this will be the video type. So this 4.2 mark outside. This 2.2 mark outside. Connect by the so this will form a trapezium and it is subject to a lateral load. So central point load, it will be having a bending one of this triangle. So this forms a baseline above the baseline plus and this is minus. Okay. Then come to B. In beam, I have anti-clockwise moment here. So apply anti-clockwise beam will move up. Here I have clockwise moment will move up. Connect these two again trapezium. Free bending moment is the parabola. So this will be completed. Then here. This is anti-clockwise moment, apply an anti-clockwise moment, column will be pushed out. And here also anti-clockwise moment, apply an anti-clockwise moment, will be pushed inside, connect these two. This completes the 21 diagram. So we need to complete this O1, find this O1 and O2. O1 is maximum positive moment here, and O2 is the maximum positive moment here. So to find these values, we need to consider free body of AB and free body of BC, and then we can find the net bending moment values. Okay, net bending moment values are also essential to design the um, expand reinforcement as well the support reinforcement. Okay. So the steps, additional steps in uh, frames with side sway. Okay. So step one is stiffness and relative stiffness. Same common for frames with sway without side sway. Step two, distribution factor. It's also common for frames without side sway and with side sway. Step three, fixer at moments. So we are finding fixer moment due to applied load. That is also common. Step four, we are assuming as non-sway condition and we are viewing the moment distribution. So moment distribution procedure is same for frames as well for uh, frames without side sway and with side sway. But we need to do this additional work. Okay. So without side sway, then we assume some side sway. Uh, calculate fixer moment due to assume this way using plus R minus 6 A delta by L squared. If your displacement is to the right side, then we have minus the displacement to the left side, then plus. So that is the sign convention for fixed uh, amount due to side sway. Calculate the value. Assume some E delta value sub value. Get the uh, assumed fixed moment values due to side sway or fixed amount due to assumed side sway. Then do another moment distribution with the assumed uh, fixed moment due to side sway. Then have this as M dash values, have the initial one as M dash values. Okay, then form the horizontal shear condition equation, which is P plus M, M dash AB plus R M double dash AB plus M dash BA plus R M double dash BA minus P V1 by H1 plus M dash CD plus R M double dash CD uh, plus M dash DC plus R M double dash DC divided by H2 equal to zero. Take values from first table as well from second table. Fill uh, write the fill the value of the lateral load. Fill the value of the distance of the lateral load from the top. Uh, okay. H1, H2 values, you'll be getting the value of correction factor R. Once correction factor is obtained, then again, a small table in which joint member, then M dash values, R multiplied by M double dash values, addition of these two will give you the final and how much. Okay, so this procedure we follow in case of frames with side sway. Do you have any doubt, Mr. Sir, I have one small doubt, sir. Yes. N double dash table. Yes. 
uh, in case of uh, fixed end moment with loadings, we are putting one end minus and another end plus, sir. Yes. But in case of uh, fixed end moment, first way. Yes, yes. Both are minus. Yes, both will be will be having same sign. Okay, that you, uh, that we might have studied in uh, beams with sinking of supports. Okay, sinking of supports we have studied. Have you studied? Have you been taught earlier? Yes, sir. In sinking of supports, how we have calculated, say, if the support sinks, uh, that they say, if in a continuous beam ABC, uh, in a continuous support, uh, continuous beam ABC, they will give, like, give you like this, B sinks by 10 mm. Okay, B sinks by 10 mm. So in that case also, we will be calculating fixer and moment due to sinking of support. So due to sinking, the nature of moment at both the ends will be same. Okay? They will give you, uh, say, they will give you M dash, M of, a B M of dash A B equal to M of dash B A. Likewise, only we will be getting because it will uh, it will cause either clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, rotation. Okay, that sinking will cause either clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation. So it should be same for the member. It will not vary. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, this method is available in any textbook, sir, or uh, can we get this? I will give you uh, share the PPT. Okay. Okay. Any textbook available sir, in this method? Mm, textbook, I have not seen this type of approach. They will use some other approach and people use some other approach. This uh, actually, this method was uh, uh, slightly modified and uh, to, uh, to meet our convenience by our professor uh, Mutusar, as I told. Okay. Sir. So we follow this for the, uh, for the period of 20 or 25 years, we follow the same method. So there is no harm. Even you can check with the conventional other methods, it will be safe. Okay, sir. Similarly, in the next uh, tomorrow session, I will be handling you a uh, matrix uh, displacement method. Yeah. That also, the method has been uh, formed or framed by a professor. So, we follow the methodology. Sir. That will also be not available in any textbook. Okay, okay. But final end moments, everything will be the same. The procedure will be slightly different and uh, we have we find it easier compared to other methods. That's why we follow this. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, I'll tell you why we use minus sign plus sign. Because that I told I will explain later. How this minus? Because blindly we should not tell students anything. Why plus use plus sign minus sign? Okay. So I'll tell you. That's again from uh, seeking of support concept only. So, do you see the whiteboard? Yes, sir. Okay. Say, uh, let me take a beam. Actually, it should be horizontal. Sorry for the thing. Say, I have a support here. Okay. And I have a support here. Okay. Uh, let this support subject to sinking like this. So, we will be connecting this. With the help of line like this, okay, sorry. So if it sinks here, I'll be connecting with the help of a curve like this. Okay. The, so the new support will be here. After sinking, our settlement will go here. Okay. So say uh, you draw a horizontal line here. You draw a dotted line, horizontal line here. Okay. So uh, this settlement, this settlement is delta. Okay. This settlement is delta so say if i draw a tangent to this curve if i draw a tangent to this curve this will be like this okay this will be like this so if i want to if i want to make this tangent exactly horizontal or merge with the horizontal axis okay if you want to make this tangent merge with the horizontal axis what type of moment I need to be I need to apply at this chart. So if I apply a clockwise moment, it will merge with the horizontal axis, or if I apply an anti-clockwise moment, it will merge with the horizontal axis. Tell me. So if I apply an anti-clockwise, uh, uh, if I apply an anti-clockwise moment, then this tangent will become truly horizontal. So this will decide the sign, either plus or minus 60 delta by L squared. So since the anti-clockwise moment is required to make it merge with the horizontal axis, we are using minus sign. Okay. So that's why we told, or uh, we told, we tell the students 
if the settlement or sinking is to the right side, use minus sign. If the settlement is to the left side, okay. Say for example, this is span AB. Okay, this is span AB. Okay, and if you have uh, one more span BC, okay, if you compare to C, say if you connect uh, these two, okay, if you connect uh, B and C, this uh, support C is here, no? support C is here, uh, support B is here. Okay, so here settlement is here, okay, like this. So try horizontal axis here, okay. So if, the, if I draw a uh, tangent here, if I draw a tangent here, I want to make this tangent uh, perfectly uh, merge with the horizontal axis. So here I need to apply a clockwise moment to make this tangent merge with the horizontal axis. Therefore, we say when the settlement is to the left, use plus sign, when the settlement is to the right, use minus sign. Same is for uh, portal frames also. The portal frame will be having columns, okay? The column, so column will be subjected to side sway here. So if the sway is to the right side, okay, it will connect to these two. If the sway is to the right side, okay, if the sway is to the right, uh, sway is to the right side. This is delta. If I draw a vertical axis here, if I draw a vertical axis here, draw a vertical quarter line, okay, draw a vertical axis here. So. In order to make this inclined line merge with this vertical axis, what type of moment need to be applied? I want to make this inclined line merge with the vertical axis. So, what type of nature of moment need to be applied? I need to apply an anti-clockwise moment to make this merge with the vertical axis. Okay, that's why we say when the sway is to the right side, use minus sign. And the sway is to the left side, use plus side. Okay, is it clear? This also we should tell our students because we, we are telling them uh, if a right side settlement use minus sign, left side settlement plus sign, they should understand why we are using plus sign. So, the nature of the moment required to make the uh, tangent that's with the horizontal or vertical axis that will decide the sign. Okay. Now, I'm going to Is it clear or not? Okay. No. Now, another example of frames with side sway. Say, and you can see this example. A portal frame, uh, say span three meters, three meter high, uh, span of the beam is three meters, height of the column is three meters, subject to a lateral of ten kilometer. Okay, subject to lateral of ten kilometer. So in this case, how to solve? So whether there will be sides way or not? Yes. What is the reason? Since the frame doesn't have any support at the beam level and it has sub it is subject to a lateral load of 10 kilo. Therefore, the frame will be subjected to side sway. Okay. So step one, stiffness and relative stiffness. So span A, B, B, C, C, D, length 3 meters, 3 meters, 3 meters, moment of finish I, 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 I uh, stiffness I by L, I by L, I by L, relative stiffness 1, 1, 1. Okay, like this. Then distribution factor. DF AB is 0 since A is fixed. DF BA, KBA by KBA plus KBC, what by 2, 0.5. Similarly, everything will be 0.5 and DF DC equal to 0 since D is fixed. Okay. Then, fixer and moments. Step 3, fixer and moments. Will there be any fixer and moments in this problem? Will there be any fixer and moments in this problem? Please see the problem and tell me whether there will be any fixer and moments in this problem. Sir. What will be the fixture and moments in span AB? In span AB, there won't be any fixture and moment. Similarly, in span BC also, there won't be any fixture and moment. Only when you have applied load at some distance, then you'll be having fixture and moments. Here, in span AB, the load is applied at this end. Therefore, there won't be any fixture and moment. Similarly, in span BC also, there won't be any fixture and moment. 
fat CD also there will not be any fixer and moments. Only when you have fixer and moments, then first table becomes essential. Moment distribution due to non sway condition, we need to do. But problems of this type, that table is, the work uh, of, of preparing that table is reduced. We need not do moment distribution due to non sway. You can straight away go to assumed sway and do the moment distribution due to assumed sway condition. We understand moment distribution due to non sway is not required since we do not have any fixer end moments. Since we do not have any fixer end moments, moment distribution due to non sway is not required. That is, m dash values totally not required. We can straight away go to m double dash values. Okay. You have any doubt in this? So, right, fix the moment due to assumed sway. So, you can write the reason. Since there is no load in any of the spans, no fixer and moment. There is no fixer and moment. Step 3, fixer and due to assumed sway. Span A, B, B, C, C, D, uh, sway. A, B will be subject to side sway delta towards right. Uh, C, D will be subject to side sway delta right. Okay. Therefore, fixer and moment due to side sway. Minus 6 A delta will square. 0 minus 6 A delta will square. Why minus sign? Because the settlement or uh, sway is to the right side. Okay, we know delta, sorry, we know L, I values are same. Therefore, assume EA delta, same 100 we are assuming. Okay, so you will be getting some value. So, use this value in the moment distribution table. Moment distribution due to assume this way. Okay, so joint A, B, C, D, number A, B, C, A, B, C, C, D, C, D, D, C, relative stiffness, this distribution factor 0, 0.5. 0 0.5, 0.5, 0.50. Then fixer and moment, you take these values minus 66.61 for AB and BA and 0 for BC and CB and minus 66.61 for CD and DC. Then DEF, distributed end moment, consider every joint minus 66.67 is there, apply plus 66.67, multiply by the distribution factor, you get 0. Then here, joint B, minus 66.7 plus 0. So about plus 66.7 need to be applied, multiplied by factor 0.5.5, you're getting 33.34 on either side. Here, minus 66.67 is there, apply plus 66.67, multiply by the factors, you get 33.34. Okay. Then carry over moment A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, C, C, B, C, D, D, C. So draw these arrows correctly. Before carry over, please put these arrows, that will help us to avoid mistakes. Okay. So, AB to PA. So, 33.34 half value, half value. Here, half value, half value. Half value, half value. Okay. Then, DEM, second iteration. Consider every joint. Here, 0. Here, 0, 16.67. Therefore, minus 16.67. Multiply by factors. Getting this. Here, 16.67. Minus 66.67 need to be applied. Multiply by this factor. Therefore, minus. So, to check what you should do, you should add all these four values. You should get 0. Similarly, here, if you add all these four values, you should get 0. Then CYM, carry over moment. Then DEM, CYM, four iterations, enough. Okay. So the values which we get finally are M double dash values. Minus 53.12, minus 40.11, plus 40.11, 40.11, minus 40.11, minus 53.12. So these are M double dash values. Now these values are not corrected. So to find the correction factor R. So we have the horizontal shear condition equation is P plus MAB plus MBA minus PB1 by H1 plus MCD plus MDC by H2 equal to 0. Here P is the lateral load. So load is known, given 10 kiloton. Okay. MAB, you expand this as M dash AB plus RM double dash AB. M dash AB will not be there because we don't have any first table. So second table, R into second table values plus M dash BA. Okay. Plus RM double dash BA. So M dash BA won't be there. RM double dash BA will be here. So R multiplied this value. Similarly, M dash uh, C, D, D, C, R and third, so that value. So expand the equation. If this divided by H1, this will be H2. So you will be getting the value of R, correction factor. So please, how we correction factor supply. Okay, so the equation gets reduced like this. P plus MBA plus MAB, or MAB plus MBA minus PB1, minus PB1 will get 0, therefore H1, MCD plus MDC by H2. Therefore, the final equation will be P plus RM double dash AB plus RM double dash BA by H1, plus RM double dash CD plus RM double dash DC by H2 equal to 0. So,
So H1, height of column H2, both are same. P is 10 kilo and apply the values. You're getting the value of R. Once R is known, then final end moment will be right member, right m dash values, R into m double dash values. Okay, R multiply m will be the final end moments. So because first table no value, m dash values are zero. M double dash values R will give the final end moments. So you get minus 8.49, minus 6.42, 6.42, 6.42. Minus 6.42 and minus 8.49. Okay. So plot the values or mark the values on the frame and then try plotting. Okay. So please try plotting this. I want you to plot this many moment and get practice. Please try. Because frames with the sides way, I didn't ask you to do numerical work. At least you please try this. Plotting the bending mode diagram correctly. Generally, we gain confidence over the method. Thereby, we can teach our students with confidence. Do you face any difficulty in plotting? Here we need not uh, draw free BMD because there is no load. So simply whatever you plot this end moment value, that itself will be the final end moment uh, when you want diagram. So this type of question normally mostly expected in university questions. Because this will uh, reduce time, you can do within the time this type of problem. You have any doubt in analyzing frames with side sway? Saudam Mirajan. See whether you get uh, a Benio diagram like this.
need to go one by one okay first draw for ab and then bc and then cd so for ab at a we have an anti clockwise moment because minus minus means anti clock so apply an anti clockwise moment the column will be pushed out okay the column will be pushed out here we have again here at the top at b also this minus so minus 6.42 so anti clock is moment applying anti clock is moment that will make the column uh, push the column inside so 6.4 plot a value of 6.42 this is 8.4 and connect these two so this will be the pentagon diagram for portion ab to clear anti clock is moment make the column or push the column outside here anti clock is moment to push the column inside so mark this point mark this point connect these two okay then come to beam in the beam mbc is clockwise plus 6.4 so apply a clockwise moment will push the beam down so mark this point mark this point here we have clockwise moment of 6.4 to apply clockwise to push the beam upward above this point so connect these two points to draw correctly to draw uh, somewhat proportionately to draw somewhat proportionately okay then you will get this overlapping portion like this We're getting some portion getting overlap. So this is the correct uh, diagram for beam with the lateral load like this. Here and then for this column, anti-clockwise therefore out, and here anti-clockwise therefore inside. So this will be the Benino diagram for frames with side strip or with lateral load. So for moment distribution method, in the morning we started with frames without side sway. So we have seen two examples. Similarly, for frames with side sway, we have seen two examples. Okay, I will supply the material this PPT to Adam and get it shared. Okay? And it's a time for discussion. If you have any doubt whether in uh, frames with side sway or without side sway, you can get it clarified. Sir, there is no limitation, sir. That should be limitations for the method. Ah, uh, moment distribution. Ah, uh, no, no limitation. There is uh, uh, the time taken will be more if we have more number of base, more number of uh, spans. Okay. Otherwise, the procedure is same. So normally, what you people do is, if you go beyond the one uh, one bay or two bay or multi sway, even for multi sway frames, you can use the method. But that can be solved with the aid of a computer program. So people will program this so that we can do it. Uh, solving equations and all the solving the equations are all will be taken care by the computer. Actually, Stat Pro, Stat Pro itself, they have incorporated uh, matrix moment distribution method. The matrix moment distribution method to do the uh, processing of the variables. So there are different uh, types of such analysis. Which one is the best one? Uh, and calculation, find the element, and the software. Which one is best one? Best one. Okay. So that uh, depends. Say, if you're in a building, say if you are dealing with a small building, if you are uh, dealing with a small building which involves, say, maximum of two span or three spans, okay, then we can do manually. We can do manually. We can very well do it manually, okay. Uh, but if you go for multi-storied frames, go for multi-storied frames, manual calculations cannot be done. So it can be done, but it will take uh, the time computation. Time will be very much more, okay. In that case, what people do is they go for substitute frame analysis. They will take an intermediate frame and we have substitute frame method. So in the substitute frame method, we can uh, analyze intermediate frames and we can do manually. Okay, that is also possible. But if you want to do uh, within time limit, then uh, with the help of uh, softwares. So software for analysis, we can either use a finite element based software or uh, conventional, say, Stat Pro like software, Stat Pro or uh, ETAPS you can use. Okay. Only when, uh, say, when you are using complicated things, that is, there is you are doing some experimental works in reinforcement concrete, okay, and that need to be modeled. Then there only this finite element plays a major role. Okay, 
for ordinary building frame analysis, our uh, regular method using software is enough. Okay, and people in structural design consultancy offices they use uh, software for analysis alone. For, for analysis alone, they use software. How for how for design? They use their own spreadsheets. Yeah, they they develop their own spreadsheets for uh, every element like beam, column, uh, slabs, etc. Uh, similarly for footings. So they use the uh, spreadsheets for uh, design. So this is the current uh, trend followed in uh, design offices. Okay, sir. thank you, thank you, sir. On small doubt, sir. Ah, uh, sir. Sir, while drawing, uh, finding fixed end moment for external load. Okay. One side we are uh, putting plus, and another side putting minus, sir. Uh, okay. What is sign convention follow, sir? No, actually that is. Uh, 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 that has come from the fixed beam analysis. Say so we, we have made a study already fixed beams. Okay, so if you analyze a fixed beam, if you analyze a fixed beam, the left side you will be getting anti-clockwise moment, and right side will be getting clockwise moment. Finally, if you analyze a fixed beam using the uh, fixed beam moment area method or so, or theorem of three moments, if you use and if you analyze the uh, fixed beam in a fixed beam due to the applied load, and that again depends on the load direction. Say I will explain you that. You have a fixed beam, okay? A fixed beam. Say the fixed beam is subject to downward UDL or downward uh, any type, any downward load, okay? If you analyze a fixed beam by our moment area method or uh, by uh, theorem of three moment method, finally the end moment will be getting uh, this moment as will be getting as anti-clockwise, and this moment will be getting clockwise, okay? So this we call as the fixed end moments in the in our analysis. Okay, that is we mean uh, we treat every span as a fixed beam subject to the given loading, and we are finding the fixed end moments. So the fixed end moments in case of downward load like this will always be negative on left side and positive on right side. This has been arrived using the fixed beam calculations. Okay, sometimes you may be having the load uh, like this, the reverse direction. That is, you may be having load upward load. The upward upward UDL like this. Okay. You may have upward UDL like this. So in this case, left side will be getting a plus clockwise moment and right side will be getting minus. And when do we expect this is practically when do we expect an upward load? Say in case of upward soil pressure. Say if I am uh, designing a box culvert, if I am designing a box culvert, okay, so designing a box culvert. That will be treated as a frame. Okay, that will be treated as a yeah, closed frame. So this uh, this portion, this uh, this beam is subjected to upward UDL. Okay, this uh, beam is subjected to upward UDL. Okay, upward UDL. Whereas this portion of the slab, this at the top of the uh, box culvert, that will be subjected to downward load. Okay, and this is the side wall of the uh, box culvert. So side wall will be subjected to lateral earth pressure, which will, which will be uh, triangular variation like this. Okay, that will be triangle like this. So in this type of frame, we expect all types of loads. So this beam, this beam is subjected to upward UDL. Uh, this beam is subjected to triangular load. This beam is subjected to central point or downward, and this beam is subjected to a uniform varying load. So we have several cases. So here, in case of if you find fixed moment for this beam, left side will be getting plus value. And right side will be getting minus value. That is left side clockwise moment, anti-clockwise moment. For this beam, I will be getting left side anti-clockwise moment and right side plus. Uh, okay. Similarly, I need to analyze this as a beam, horizontal beam, and uh, this side minus and this side plus. Okay. If I take this, uh, if I analyze from, uh, uh, say, if I take the fixed beam, uh, a similar fixed beam like this, and the view from this side, and this side it will be, I will be getting minus, and this side I will be getting. Plus. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If you get confused, just you make it horizontal. 
you make the beam horizontal okay if you make horizontal like this then you will be not will not be having any doubt someone type the message any any more doubt so if there are no doubts sir can we conclude the session sir ah uh, yes ma'am So thank you all for your patient listening. Yes, sir. So on behalf of all the participants here, I would like to convey my sincere thanks to Dr. S. Nagan. So for explaining the moment distribution method, especially the problems on analysis of uh, frames with and without sway, so very clearly. So he has explained uh, step by step. So thank you, sir, for that. And uh, we are going to listen more from him tomorrow on stiffness matrix method also. So thank you so much, sir. Okay, no. thank you. Shall I leave? Okay. Oh yes, sir. I think there is a group photo session. Oh. Uh, so participants, you please uh, uh, switch on your video for the group photo session. So, Dr. Satya is the another coordinator of this program, sir. I think you know Dr. Satya very well. Oh, she worked at uh, KLM, seems. Leah. No, sir. Oh. She is the student of uh, you see. Oh. She studied in MEPCO actually. Okay, uh, okay. B M E she did at T C A. Yes, yes. And her sister also studied in I A T. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. okay, okay. So happy to meet you. Thank you, sir. So we are now with uh, Sri Venkateshwara. Yeah, yes, he sir. is now S V C E, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So we'll meet again for the next session at uh, one thirty. One thirty. So thank you all.